I don't want to deter anybody from this motor, but this intake manifold job on the Trailblazer, I will definitely say sucks. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the JWIT YouTube channel. So today we are going to pull this intake manifold. Uh, it's required to put the injectors in. Now the injectors we're going with are 1500cc injectors. They're the LS long style injector from Snake Eater Performance. I will put the link in the description of the video so you can see what they are and if you want to buy some uh, you can buy them for yourself. Now these injectors are EV1 style injectors. However, the harness on this motor is an EV6 style harness. Um, I did speak to, I believe his name is uh, Johnny or, oh, Jeremy. His name is Jeremy from Lime Swap. So he currently offers a plug and play EV6 style harness. I don't believe all of these Trailblazers had an EV6 harness, maybe just the later ones like the 08, 09. Now he did say he's probably going to do a small batch of plug and play EV1 harnesses. Uh, so if anyone is interested, I would go to uh, limeswap.com. Again, that will be also in the description below. And you can uh, keep an eye out for those from him. Uh, I know his EV6 harnesses are currently about $100, which isn't really bad at all. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna price the EV1s the same, uh, but that's something to look out for. Uh, hopefully this video is a little bit uh, clearer as well as the audio being a little bit better. So I finally upgraded my <laughs> my GoPro that I've been using for since I started YouTube really. Um, and I also plan to buy like a DSLR camera with a, uh, a wireless audio uh, functionality. Uh, but that's going to be probably a little bit down the road. Uh, just wanted to bring that up if you guys saw the last video. Uh, in the upper left hand corner of the video, it was kind of blurry. That's because I dropped my GoPro and it, it cracked the lens. Uh, so in that corner of the video, it, you can kind of see a little blur. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to go ahead and start getting this pulled off. Uh, to get this off, you do have to pull the, the computer since it's bolted to the side of the manifold. Uh, unplug the map, uh, yeah, the, the map harness. Uh, the breather that goes to the brake booster. You also have to pull the belt off um, because you will have to remove the alternator to get to one of the manifold bolts. Um, once I get all this off, I'll show you why it's required. So the fuel rail bolts to the side of the head, but the where the fuel rail sits is underneath this portion of the manifold. So you cannot access it with the manifold installed. Um, it's kind of a challenge. It's definitely a bit of a job, especially on the Trailblazer because it's it's really tight in there. Cylinder five and six are under the wiper cowl. Um, but unfortunately it has to be done. This is really the last major hurdle we have uh, before final fit and install of the manifold as well as the turbo. Um, I'm really excited because after these injectors, it's really, honestly, it's really full steam ahead to get the turbo installed, the downpipe modified, the charge pipe, fabbed up and that's it really the, the only part we're missing is the meth injection kit which i plan to order this week um, so we're probably a few videos away from this thing really running so real time i'm gonna say two to four weeks hopefully i don't shoot myself in the foot by by saying that but uh i i really do believe that's how close we are we have all of the four inch piping Spoiler alert, we're doing a four inch downpipe and probably four inch all the way out to a, to a, I guess a muffler or something like that. Really hard to find a four inch inlet outlet muffler. So we might neck it down a little bit towards the end. Uh, not sure yet, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that's really, you know, that that's all we have to do. We got O2 bungs for the wide band as well as the factory upstream O2 sensor. Uh, we have wastegate, we have blow off valve. Uh, we have all the charge pipe uh, material as well, well as the couplings. Um, and then we already have uh, my buddy Matt working on a tune for this. So 
The only thing that really won't be done by the time we start the car is the fuel pump won't be installed because I really don't want to drop the tank on the ground. So the plan is to get a tune into the Trailblazer, uh, get it started to where I can at least start it, run it, check for leaks, move it around, and that way we can drive it onto the lift at my buddy's shop uh, when he has uh, uh, some time that we can put it on the lift, drop the tank, put the fuel pump in it, and then we can actually make a legitimate pull in it. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Uh, I, I should have bought the spark plugs for this, but I didn't. Um, I'm gonna see if AutoZone has them in stock today. Uh, I'll link the spark plugs in the description below. You can find that on the 4200 wiki. Um, they are a specific plug. Um, they're the same type of plug that you would run on an LS, but this motor requires a longer thread. Uh, so you can't just throw an LS plug in here. It won't, it really won't work. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so I'm going to see if AutoZone has any of those in stock. And while we have all this apart, might as well pull the coils, gap the plugs and put the new plugs in and uh, do that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. And uh, let me show you what all is involved as I come up with uh, little roadblocks along the way. Hopefully you guys help you guys if you're going to pull one of these on a Trailblazer. Now, this is not a how-to video. I want to Put that disclaimer out there now i am making an assumption that you guys know somewhat basic stuff so first of all like disconnect your battery because you are going to have to uh unplug the ecu um, and then unbolt it so you can fully remove it and get it out of the way um, and then i'm not going to tell you how to take the belt off or the alternator or anything like that i mean some of this stuff is self-explanatory so if you if you're looking for a how-to video, there are other how-to videos out there on how to do this exact job. Uh, but if for anyone that is maybe thinking of going down this path that is mechanically inclined, uh, this video is kind of just giving you tips and tricks uh, as like maybe there's maybe there's a line you have to move or like, uh, you know, I don't mind sharing like, hey, this bolt is this size. That way you can, when you tool up to get, to do, re get ready to do the job, you have everything you need. You don't have to run back and forth to the toolbox like I'm about to do. So, uh, all right, let's get started. Okay, we have the alternator out. We have the ECU, the ECU bracket, the alternator bracket, as well as a bunch of uh, miscellaneous things un unplugged, uh, such as this, which I'm, I think that's like the idle air control valve. The throttle body is unplugged. Uh, map sensor is unplugged. Uh, we have all of the harnesses, which have these little uh, clips that hold them onto a bracket. Those are undone. We have the vacuum line to the brake booster unplugged. Uh, that vacuum line there, I'm pretty sure, is just coming from somewhere on the lower manifold up to the upper. I could be wrong. That could be from a port on the head. So I may have to undo that one as well. But I wanted to show you the whole reason you need to, you need to take the alternator off. And it's because of this, this bolt right there. So the very forward bolt on the intake manifold is not accessible with the alternator installed. So you do have to remove it. Uh, removing the alternator, there's three 15 millimeter bolts. There's two on the top, one on the bottom, uh, let's see here, right here. Um, I will say if you're not taking the AC lines off because you don't want to mess with the AC system or you don't have the AC tool to uh, vacuum it all out, uh, this bottom bolt here can definitely be challenging. Uh, I had to get it with a wrench, and there's not a lot of room to work with. Um, oh, also, the fuel line is disconnected. Uh, so here's the hard line here, kind of crusty. I have it bent back here just out of place for now, but that is where it normally connects. Uh, so now we're going to go through and unbolt the intake manifold, which includes these 10 millimeter uh, head uh, 10 millimeter head bolts right here one pretty much on either side of every runner so I do believe there is uh, seven bolts maybe one two three four five six seven yes there are seven and from the last video those hoses that come from the secondary air injection pump this This is where they come up right there so they connect to that plastic piece um, that i was unable to unbolt from the motor um, which comes up over there to where i cut it um, that last bolt for the intake manifold it, it's on the far side of that runner close to the firewall 
I'm not exactly sure how fun that is going to be to get out. But uh, that's what's left. I'm going to unbolt these seven bolts, hopefully fish this intake manifold out of here, and then show you what it's like to access the fuel rails. I don't want to deter anybody from this motor, but this intake manifold job on the Trailblazer, I will definitely say sucks. Um, but it is out. I was a little off on the bolt pattern, so let me show you guys what it looks like. Uh, all I could see was were, I think, these ones at the bottom. Uh, so what it does, starting from front to back or back to front, doesn't matter. There's one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Uh, <clears throat> this one back here, kind of tricky. Uh, not as bad as I thought, to be honest. If you kind of uh, manhandle the secondary air injection tube plastic out of the way, uh, you can get a swivel with a 10 millimeter back there. Um, all of these are 10 millimeter head bolts. Um, those gaskets look all right. I don't think I'm going to risk pulling them out and replace them. I'll probably just leave them the way it is. And uh, not a terrible amount of buildup here. A uh, little bit of carbon might might clean it up, but to be honest, it doesn't look terrible in there. But now that the manifold is out, you can see what I was talking about. So there's the fuel rail. Uh, it's held in by these 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, there's four of them. And then there's where the harness plugs in. So most likely I'll unplug that harness. Uh, unbolt these 10 millimeter head bolts and pull the entire manifold assembly out uh, with the sub harness and then we will proceed to pull the factory injectors out put the new injectors in with the injector adapters and while it's out I might might as well take the opportunity to clean that intake surface up but Let's go ahead and get this out and swap the injectors. All right, so we got the injectors out. This is the fuel rail. Um, I actually was wrong. I thought there was four spots that held it down. There's actually only three, two in the front and then one here in the rear. Uh, they are EV6 injectors. So let's go ahead and pull, pull this one maybe. Yep, so you can see that is an EV6 style injector. Let me pull the injector out actually so you can see it. So this is an EV6 style injector. Uh, I think the EV6 is US CAR, US car. And then the new injector that we have from Snake Eater Performance, this is a 1500 cc or 150 pound injector. Uh, these are EV1, which I believe are Jetronic. I could be, have the Jetronic and US CAR backwards. Uh, so to get this to work um, without having to redo the whole harness, you buy these adapters. This is EV1 female to EV6 male. So this allows you to plug the factory harness in. You plug the EV1 onto the injector and then the EV6 plug will plug onto that adapter. Uh, the link is in the description below. I just got these on Amazon. You get a pack of eight of them for like 20 bucks. Obviously you only need six, so you have two left over. Um, so yeah, these are the, like I said, these are the snake eater injectors. You can see here, the height is almost identical. Right, so uh, this is the height of, this is the stock injector, and this is the Snake Eater Performance injector, and they are almost identical. So this is why these injectors are nice. Now you can take these factory injectors and decap them, and then you know whoever does the decapping service for you, maybe get two sets of them, and then take the closest six in flow rate and see if you, know, if you wanna do that. And then all it is is playing with the fuel table a little bit to get it right in the tune. So I'm going to put these new injectors in, put the adapters on, and get the fuel rail back in the car. And then uh, right as soon as that's done, that's probably going to be the end of the video. Uh, putting the manifold back in is just reverse order of it coming out. Uh, it was kind of a pain. You just have to be patient with it. It does kind of suck, uh, but it's a necessary evil to have boost on a trailblazer. Uh, so something that's worth noting here, so this injector has two sets of grooves here. Uh, there's the lower one, and then I don't know if it's gonna focus, but there's one right above it as well. Let's see if I can figure it out, there it is. So the, the clip that holds this in, this has to go into the groove that's closest to the O-ring at the top. 
I was talking to Calvin about this and he said, if, if you put it into the lower clip, the one that's closer to the center of the injector, it doesn't give the injector enough length to seat into the head. So it'll probably leak. So you have to put it into that clip that's, or that, that groove that's closest to the O-ring on top uh, to get it to seat into the head and prevent any leaks. Well, there it is. Injectors are finally installed. The fuel rail is back in. I'm gonna just wrap up the video here. I'm not gonna bore you guys with reinstalling the intake manifold and the alternator, as well as the bracket, everything else like that. Uh, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. This was uh, not super fun to do, uh, but unfortunately it's required if you need the extra fuel because you're gonna go forced induction. Um, that being said, if you guys like the video, uh, please give it a like. Uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, feel free to leave a comment section below with your thoughts on the build. I'm very excited that we are getting a lot closer to hopefully firing this thing up. Uh, I'm hoping that the next episode will be final turbo manifold fitment as well as exhaust fitment. Maybe some downpipe fabrication and or uh, charge pipe fabrication. So last, last thing I really need to order is pretty much the methanol injection kit. So I'm going to get on that this week and make sure that I have that in hand prior to filming the next video. Um, well, like I said before, um, please consider subscribing, like the video if you liked it, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.